All right, so in this video, we're gonna do a little more detailed overview of what you should expect when you blend data in Google Data Studio. If you want just a regular overview of how to blend data, just watch the previous part before this. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take this Google Sheet that I have here, and I'm gonna make two worksheets here. I'm gonna go here and create the first worksheet. I'm gonna call this one Sales. And in here, we'll just do something pretty basic. I'll do an ID, or I'll call this transaction ID, something like this. Uh, we're probably not even gonna use that column, but it's just a column name. I'm gonna do something like QTY for quantity, and we'll do something like product ID. So three columns in this. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five transactions. And I'm gonna do some quantities here. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And then we're gonna assign it to some product IDs. Now, before we actually do product IDs, let's actually create another worksheet. I'm gonna call this one products. I'm gonna create a couple of columns here. Now, the first column is gonna be the ID of the product. Now, normally I would call this product ID, like this one. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna call it ID and we'll have some sort of name for the product. So we'll call this like product name. So here I'm gonna do a few products. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five products. And I'll just keep this simple. I'll do something like coffee, tea, sugar, cream, and milk. This is gonna be my products list. So if I go to sales, let's say I wanted to say that this was 10 T, which is number two, I would just assign number two to that particular transaction. Now, if this was also T, that would also be number two. Now this one I'm gonna assign to number six. Now number six doesn't really exist in here. So here I'm just gonna do, let's say this one number one, which is, I don't know, one was coffee. And this one we'll do four, which is gonna be crim. And we'll use these two tiny tables to understand what exactly happens when we do the blend in Data Studio. So this is where I'm gonna go to Data Studio and basically take this and create a data source out of it. So I'm gonna go to this. I'm not really gonna do it in this report that we've already built. So here I'm gonna go here and create a data source. So that's gonna be coming from that Google Sheet. The name of the sheet goes here and then the name of the worksheet. So the first one is gonna be the sales. Use the first row as headers, looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect to this. Now I'm gonna name this data source. I'm gonna call it sales data source. Click connect. That should connect to that first data source. Now we can assign our different column types, so product ID number, quantity number, transaction ID number, and then record count. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty much done with this particular data set. So I'm just gonna go edit connections and get back to my sources and refresh this. And we have our sales data source. All here, now we need to also create a data source for the second products worksheet. So we'll go create data source, kind of the same thing. Google Sheets, select the sheet, select the products worksheet out of it and click connect. This one I'm gonna call products data source. So I'll just again get back to my list. So go back here, go back to Data Studio, reload this. So I have this sales data source, I have this products data source. So I'll go back to that sales data source and create a report out of this. Add to report, call this test blend. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blend this data. So I don't want to use the sales data source. I'm just gonna blend the data. So I'm gonna click blend data. This thing is gonna pop up. Now we have this current data source. So I'm gonna click add another data source and use that product 
data source. Add to report. So now we have that sales data source on the left, product data source on the right. So we have to now choose the join column. Now, if you remember, we have this product ID column from sales and we have this ID column from products. So I'm gonna go to this thing and in this left thing, I'm gonna remove this. So the join key from here is product ID and ID is the column from here. So we're joining on this key. Now other columns I'm gonna need as a dimension, I'm gonna need quantity. Well, actually that's gonna be a metric, not a dimension. Uh, we have record count, which is already here, so that's fine. We might want to get transaction ID, although we're not gonna be using that, so I'm just gonna put it in dimensions anyways. So that's pretty much all from this table on the left. Now on this table on the right, there's this missing thing, we don't need it, so I'm gonna remove this. Oh, this join key, see, it should not be here, it should be under dimensions, transactions. We're joining on product ID, so this goes under dimensions. ID here for join key. Now other things I'm gonna need, I will, again, we could do record count as a metric if we wanted to, and then we could do product name, which is the thing that we actually want to do in dimensions. So now I have this blended data source, which is called blended data one. I'm just gonna rename this. I'm gonna call it merged data from sales and products. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna close this. So it automatically, as you can see, created a table for us. And basically what we're getting, if you look here, we get one, two, three, four, five. Those are the transactions. So if we go here, one, two, three, four, five. And we should get this quantities, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. There they are. Uh, then, well, actually transaction IDs here. And then what we get, we get basically this joint product name, which gives us T and it goes by C2 and T is two, so that's basically here we join, see the two is T, so we get those next to this. So T, T, this is Krim, and for the one that was six that didn't have a match, we get six, and we get coffee. Now the ones that we don't have in our sales table, like this five, which never appears here, we just ignore that one. So. Basically, this is doing left outer join. What that means, we take the first left table as the master and only the records from the second table that match. So I'm gonna remove this and convert this to a pivot table for a second. Actually, I'm gonna just keep that and also do a pivot. So I'll go here, add a chart, do a pivot table, put it in here. Now here, I want to replace the data source See, it picked up that product data source. That's not what I want. Click on that, go to that merge data, sales, products, that thing. Go back to this and I'm gonna choose product name as the row dimension. I'm gonna remove the product ID from columns and I'll choose, instead of row count, I'm gonna replace it with quantity as a metric and we'll use sum. So it's already doing sum here but if it didn't, you could also change it to sum. I'm gonna remove the row count. So what we end up getting here, if you look, I'm just gonna style this and make this a little bigger. See, we get for coffee, we get 50. So basically we add, so the coffee was number one. So that's, see number one here, the total is 50 for number one. For the total for number two, should be 40, 10 plus 30. So if we go here, yeah, actually two is probably T, so let's go check, yeah, T. So that's T, we get 40. Then for null, that's the one that didn't have any match. So that's this number six, so we got 40. So it still shows up in our report, it shows up as null. So those are the ones that don't have any matches that are gonna show up like this. And then finally we have cream. One last thing I'm gonna mention about this. So let's assume we have a situation like this. In my products table, so if I have this product IDs that I've assigned. So for this product number four, right now the match is Krim, which 
it gives us the total 20, right? So if we go back here, see we got cream, it's 20. So that's what we get. Now let's say for whatever reason, which you should not, but for whatever reason, you have another four in this product's table. So two matches. And this one is called disaster. So that's the name for this thing that's now two matches for number four. So if I go back to this and just reload this by clicking on this refresh data, it should go connect and pull the new data out of this. In the bottom, you should already see kind of what happens here. So what we get because we have two matches for that product number four, we get one line for crim that basically gets that quantity of 20 and transactions to, and then it replicates that line for 20 again, and then it puts disaster next to it because we found two matches. So we replicated the lines twice. So if we do this, which is what happens when you do left outer join, which is what this blend is doing in Google Data Studio, then what's gonna happen now we have crim 20 and disaster 20. So we replicate the lines for quantities twice, cream 20, disaster 20. Now the reason this is a problem, if you tried to get the total for how many things you sold, let's say I do a total, which is like this, and then I'm gonna use that blended data, go back, and then the metric is not gonna be record count, it's gonna be the quantity and we're gonna sum it. We'll get that the total quantity sold was 170. So what's happening, so if we just go here and sum this column, right? That gives us 150. But because we're replicating this line four, because there are two matches, now we have 20 appearing twice. So we get 20 one more time and we get 170 in that column. And if you add it three times here, let's say there's another four, and we'll do more disaster, something like this, then what's gonna happen, it's gonna replicate it yet again, so it's gonna add another 20 to our total. So if I go back and reload this thing, see now we get to 190 because we replicated that line all over again in this table structure, and that's what you're gonna get. So this is why you want to make sure that in the table where you're searching for the matching values, you don't have this situation when there are more than one possible match. So just know what's gonna happen and this is how blend works. You can also join more tables to this whole thing. So you could go back and add it this source if you had like a third table you wanted to join. So you can add another data source and join it to this again. Again, it's gonna be left out of joins. So it's gonna take whatever's from the left, it's gonna join the second one, and then it's gonna take the combined thing and join the next one and so on. But it's gonna be the same kind of logic behind this. Just make sure you have the correct join key. This will also, by the way, allow you to join by more than one key at a time with two tables. The reason you might need something like that is that if you had a situation, let's say you had a table here, I'm gonna call this table, where you have something like this, let's say this is from and this is to, and then this is the amount. So let's say this is like one thing, this is another thing, and this is some amount. And then we have maybe another option here. So if you had one table like this and you had another table where you have this from two combination, like this, and you could have some possible other columns here. I don't have any good particular names for this, so I'm just gonna call it AB. So now if I want to basically do a blend with this data, and go get the match for the amount from the other table where it's Chicago and Los Angeles combination, then I could do join by those two columns and choose both of those columns from both of these tables as our join columns when we blend our data. So right here in join keys, so you would do two columns to and from, and then again to and from. And this way it would look at this combination of the two and you could use that combination of two columns as the join key. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.
please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.